Welcome back to This Week in CAA Football. I'm Bobby Broyles, joined by my colleague Tim McDonald. Tim, there were many storylines coming out of week one of the regular season. Several league teams had strong showings against their FBS opponents on national television. But coming out of the weekend, of course, the headliner here is Towson after the Tigers knocked off UConn on Thursday night to give the program its first ever win over an FBS opponent. The Tigers head down to East Hartford and not only show up well and compete, they dominate the game. Mm -hmm. In the second half, you look there, Towson was controlling everything. Line of scrimmage through the air. Uh, Peter Athens, the quarterback, I think he surprised a lot of people. Uh, of course, you got the law offices of Sterling Pfeiffer and <laughs> Terrence West there in the backfield. Each scored two touchdowns. Towson, uh, I think not only represented well for the CAA, but they represented well for the FCS. Talk about a great weekend. Eastern Washington beats Oregon State. North Dakota State beats Kansas State. Just a great weekend for the FCS in general. The CAA, talk about that uh, history against the FBS. This is the seventh year out of the last eight years that we've had an FBS win. It was a big weekend. Uh, I think you look at the other games, it's positive. BC uh, versus Villanova. Villanova played well. They're leading at the half. Same thing to be said for William & Mary, West Virginia. Overall, a really great weekend. It's scary how good that Towson team looked against a UConn FBS, uh, excuse me, BCS qualifier. Absolutely. And now as we turn the page to week two of the regular season, we begin with not only the first conference game of the year, but the first ever CA football game for Stony Brook as the Seawolves travel to Kingston to take on Rhode Island on Saturday at 1 o'clock. Yeah, the Fighting Chuck Priori is coming here hot. Uh, it's their first game of the season. You look at this URI team that they're playing. It's on the road. Um, for the Stony Brook Seawolves, I should say. But URI, coming off a loss, they gave up 50-plus points. Uh, they scored 26 points. Now, you take the positives out of that, that's the most points they've scored since 2011. Robbie Delgado, running back for them, he also rushed for over 100 yards. Bobby, that's the first 100-yard rusher they've had yeah. since 2011. So it's really, it's really you got to look at the strides that Rhode Island's making. Uh, the good news is they come into this game, SBU, we're not really sure how they're going to look defensively. Offensively, Marcus Coker, the running back, Lyle Negron is the announced starter under center. He has some experience. But the good news for Rhodey is we're not 100% sure how this identity is going to look for Stony Brook. So Rhodey's going to use that to their advantage. Uh, Coach Trainer and them want to get off a good start. If you're playing at home, you never know what can happen. Then on Saturday at 2 o'clock, a very intriguing matchup between two former conference rivals as Maine heads to Foxborough to take on UMass, a game that can be seen live on ESPN3 and the Watch ESPN app. And I'm sure the Black Bears are just licking their lips for this one. You know, mm -hmm. this is an old New England rivalry. The Atlantic 10, the Yankee Conference, playing on the frozen tundras. You know, uh, Coach Cosgrove has to be happy for this opportunity. This is a UMass team who did not play well last week at Wisconsin, and this general transition to the FBS has just not worked out as people, ex as people had hoped, I should mm -hmm. say, for UMass fans. Maine comes into this off a win off Norfolk State. Uh, Marcus Wasilewski, he played well. This, this is a winnable game. Mm -hmm. you, you call this an FBS game, it is. It's an old rivalry, though. There's a lot more at stake than people realize for this game. It's at Gillette. People are going to be there. Uh, it's it's going to be a great game. What's better in early fall than this? Then at 3.30, CA football kicks off its second season partnering with the NBC Sports Network as Delaware hosts Delaware State in the Route 1 rivalry. Yeah, the old Route 1 rivalry there. <laughs> Delaware State versus Delaware. Coach Brock and the Blue Hens. Everyone wants to see how they're going to bounce back. Jacksonville, I think, surprised a lot of people. Delaware was down 14-0. Yeah. They come back. Yes, it's it's we're talking about Delaware, but it's better to be talking about them with a win than a loss. Delaware gives up a lot of a lot of yards last week through the air, not so much to the ground. They held Jacksonville to negative yards. Mm -hmm. So the question is, how can Coach Brock and that Delaware blue hand defense, how can they respond? Um, it, it's a process. I think it's, it's the second game of the season, so arguably mm -hmm. it's going to be exciting. Uh, we'll see how the Blue Hens respond for that. So you're saying I convinced you to say Route 1, route not, one yeah. not Route 1 anymore? Yeah. I'll say Route. Good. <laughs> now let's take a look at the rest of the action around the league in our Quick Hits segment. We begin on Saturday at 1 as Towson, coming off that big win over UConn, heads to Holy Cross. And it sounds cliche and it sounds uh, old-fashioned. How is Towson going to respond, though? You beat UConn, everyone's talking to you. UConn was trending on Twitter after, not for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. Everyone's giving you a pat on the back all week. How's Towson going to respond? Uh, Pfeiffer and Wes, is that offensive line going to take advantage of a Holy Cross team that lost to Bryan at home last week? Go down to Worcester, it's, it's a true road game. You're flying up to New England. Uh, everyone wants to see what, what's going to happen to that Towson team. Are they going to play like the team that beat UConn last week, or are they going to play like a team who has a pat on its back? At 3 o'clock, New Hampshire kicks off its 2013 season with a trip to FBS opponent Central Michigan on ESPN3. The Wildcats decided to go with Andy Bayless. I think he gives them a better option under center uh, than Sean Goldrich. In terms of athleticism, uh, Bayless is a kid who's going to be able to run the ball and, and produce that threat. UNH, of course, the question is going to be defensively. Uh, how are they going to stack up against a Central Michigan team that, that lost very, very hardly last week to Michigan? It was just not a pretty game. Uh, 
the quarterback for Central Michigan and the running back, the starters, got banged up a little bit. So it's going to be interesting to see, is that a good thing or is that a bad thing for New Hampshire coming into this game? The Wildcats, of course, had success against FBS a couple years ago. They haven't got that marquee win in the last couple of matchups, so we'll see uh, how that turns out on Saturday. Taking a look at the evening lineup now, we've got another FCS versus FBS matchup as James Madison visits Akron at 6 o'clock on ESPN3. The Dukes coming off a 38-14 win over Central Connecticut State. Quarterback Michael Birdsong, that was really his first true start as the quarterback of this offense. Uh, he run for, rushed for two touchdowns, threw for another. Coach Mickey Matthews, though, after the game, he was a little bit critical of the offense, which I think is good. Gets on the guys a little bit, maybe, you know, gets a little angry. Akron coming off a loss, which they only scored seven points, and they only scored with 42 seconds left at Central Florida. This is a game that uh, JMU goes into with a lot of confidence. They can win this one. I think this is a game definitely to keep an eye on. In terms of that FBS, FCS, let's keep the magic going. I like it. Get on the Duke train. Exactly. Absolutely. Also kicking at 6 o'clock is UAlbany, which will look to rebound from last week's loss to Duquesne when it travels to Colgate. The Great Danes versus, versus the Red Raiders. I think it'll be a good matchup of quarterbacks. It's going to be Gavin McCarty, the quarterback for Colgate, versus Will Fiaki. Fiaki's more of a true passer. McCarty is a guy who's an absolute stud in terms of being able to run the ball. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he, offensively, this could be a battle. Albany last week just did not get any rhythm going versus Duquesne, and that was Duquesne team who was pretty good. A lot of people discredited that team. They were a good team. Albany's coming into this game not a must win, but it'd be great to get a win here and bounce back from the tough loss in week one. Especially before they enter the conference season and take on Rhode Island next Saturday in their home opener. Coming off a dominant home win over VMI, Richmond will now head south to square off against ACC foe NC State at 6 o'clock on ESPN3. The Spiders coming off a win 34 to nothing over VMI. Uh, it was a good win at home. It was a solid win. Let's put it that way. Green, the running back, I think surprised a lot of people. He's a guy who I think could give them some options for the run game. Uh, and the Spiders offense, uh, everyone wants to see how they're going to do against NC State. Now, NC State, it's another task. No discredit to VMI. It's another task, though, going to NC State. The stadium is, is going to be insane. All the people are going to be getting the wolf back signs going. So Richmond, in terms of staying healthy, I think that's the key and staying competitive early on. Our final 6 o'clock kick will be Villanova, which looked to even its record when it travels to the Bronx to take on Fordham. Nova in this high-powered offense. Last week against BC looked great in the first half. John Robertson's out there. Kevin Manungai, they're running all over. They get a fake punt. Second half, they couldn't finish. I think uh, they didn't really do much offensively. They just kind of fell out of rhythm. And I think they come into this game knowing that this is a Fordham team who put up a lot of points on Rhodey, but at the same time, Rhodey, a team who doesn't run the ball well historically, put up over 200 yards rushing, and that's mm -hmm. something that Villanova is going to key on. I think that's what, look out for that this week. Robertson threw two picks last week. Let's see how he responds. And we wrap up today with the Tribe, who returns to Williamsburg to face nearby Hampton at 7 o'clock after nearly knocking off West Virginia in Morgantown last week. That was a game that was on everyone's radar early last Saturday, mm -hmm. where they're saying, who's this William & Mary team keeping it close with West Virginia? West Virginia scores with three minutes left, or else we're talking about an upset or a potential upset. I think J Coach Jimmy Laycock, he was really surprised and excited. Michael Graham, the quarterback, really played well, and I think most importantly, he stayed healthy. Mm -hmm. That's what I think Coach Laycock needs to see from his quarterback. Moving forward, let's see how they play against this Hampton team. Are they going to open it up a little bit? We know Trey McBride made some plays last week. That's going to be the key again this week. Remember, you can follow all of the games on our game day page on CAFootball.com, which features links to live stats and audio and video streaming for each of this weekend's 10 games. Also remember to check in with us on Sunday with our weekly Sunday rundown. And Bobby, there's many ways to stay with the league through social media. You can check us out on Twitter at, at CAFootball. Mm -hmm. Use the official hashtag, hashtag CAFB, Facebook.com slash CAFootball. Of course, we're on Instagram and Vine. You can search CAFootball. Uh, you can just keep going the show. I'm going to tweet right now. <laughs> well, while Tim is busy on his phone and going through Twitter, we're also kicking off our CA football on-campus coverage this weekend, so we'll be visiting all 11 of our schools and providing plenty of coverage while on campus. This week, we travel to Kingston for the big conference opener between Rhodey and Stony Brook. Well, everyone, it's time to kick off week two. For Tim McDonald, I'm Bobby Broyles. Enjoy the games this weekend.